I've grown up going to church and I love it. I tell people all my best friends go to church with me. I think it's awesome. I think it's life giving. But one thing that scares me for the traditional church is the way that we currently have it set up. Recently in the city that I go to church in, the largest church in that area, it now only has 13 people to 20 something people that go to it every Sunday. Because what happened to it is when their lead pastor retired, he got pretty old, he was there for a lot of years, the church split. And a lot of people stopped going because they didn't like the new preaching style, the next pastor, they couldn't find the right person to get involved. And this church had money. I mean, it had a lot of people there that had worked really successful careers and were willing to be very generous to their church. That was not the issue. The issue was it was designed around a man. And when we idolize a person so much that whenever we get rid of them, the whole thing falls apart, then it's probably not centered around Jesus anyways. I mean, the way we do church in the Western world can seem really odd in the more traditional Eastern type of world. And what I mean by that is when I've gone to foreign countries that you go to church in a mud hut or in a field, and there's not a big building program going on. There's not a lot of money being spent. It's just people gathering that love God and want to pursue Him. It's this different kind of weight that's taken off of it. That Hey, we're just here to love God. We're not here to be the fanciest building or the night or have, have the best sound being preacher. And there's this cool story in the Bible that I think will help us get a good illustration of this. So in the book of Numbers, chapter 21, we see the Israelites have been rebelling against God. God brought them out of Egypt, did all these things. They walked through the Red Sea. He's literally raining manna from heaven so they have food to eat. They're led by a pillar of cloud in the day and fire at night. I mean, they have been surrounded by miracles and the blessings of God, but they're turning against the Lord. Right after Moses brings the law of the Lord down off the mountain, all these people, they start worshiping other gods, and God sends out this legion of snakes among them. And I think it's quite, quite ironic because if you go back to the beginning of the Bible, the first way that people fell was by listening to a snake. So he just sends them into sin, if you will. And then through that process, they all get bitten and many people are dying. So Moses cries out to God, asks him, what should we do? God tells Moses to make a bronze serpent, put it up on a flagpole. Anyone that looks to that will be saved. And it worked. It healed them. And Jesus actually uses this as a metaphor. In, in the book of John 14, he says, As Moses lifted up the snake on a pole, so the Son of Man must also be lifted up for all to see. So it's this beautiful picture of, of redemption and grace. And it's not that God needed a snake on a flagpole to heal people, but he wanted people to have faith that, that by looking at this bronze snake that the Lord would heal them. So what did the Israelites do? They, well, they kept the snake. They kept it. And it was probably in their temple somewhere as like an art, artifact to prove, hey, this, this story that you hear about, it really happened. Here's the snake. You can see it. And over the years, we don't know when this started. We don't know how long it lasted. But in the book of Second Kings, we see that Hezekiah comes into power and he sees all these people are worshiping the bronze snake. And this is what happens. It says in 2 Kings 18.4, He removed the pagan shrines, smashed the sacred pillars, and cut down the Asherah poles. He broke up the bronze serpent that Moses had made because the people of Israel had began offering sacrifices to it. Here's what's so terrifying for me in this. I think that we do this. It's easy to sit here in the modern world and look back on idol worship, look at it, looking at it as barbaric, and disgusting, and who would ever do that? But there's things in our generation that I believe people will look back on and say that's barbaric. We kill a million babies a year through abortion in the United States. In history, we'll be looked back on as barbaric for doing that. So if we humble ourselves and ask the question, Lord, how can I apply this to my life? I think there's so many things that we do 
in idolizing pastors, especially now with social media. When you look at a pastor that has a million followers on social media, or, and then you go get in his presence, people tend to be in shock and awe of a man, a man that, that the Lord might have given a special gift to, and praise the Lord, he's reaching so many people, but he's just a man. We can't take, as it says in, in Crowder's song, Milk and Honey, he says, you can't take your money, you can't take your fame. I mean, the, the most well-known people, A-list celebrities in the world, when they get to heaven, they're going to be nothing. And just as this bronze serpent was so worthless that if it was causing people to stumble, this artifact that's been preserved for hundreds of years at this point, the king comes in and just smashes it. I think in the same way, we need to come into our modern church where we're worshiping people for how good of a speaker they are or how beautifully they sing or the songs they write. We need to come in and smash it. Be willing to give up what we think is right in pursuit of what the Bible is actually pointing us to do. And that's not worship things made by human hands like fame and money, but worship things that are of the Lord and are what He's desiring for us to truly do, that He should get all the glory and the fame, and our churches should not fall apart if one person leaves. So I hope this challenged you a little bit to think about church differently. If it did, then please leave a like on this video. It really does help. And if you want to see more videos like this, be sure to hit subscribe. My name's Logan. I'm reading through the whole Bible this year with you so we can grow in our love of Christ together. So I hope to see you back here next time as we continue to read through Scripture.